and stuff like this change regularly. Oh, we're live. Yeah, we are live. It's fine. Uh, we're having a play there, sorry. Uh, good evening. Welcome to episode 122 of the Brigaders League of Beer and Comics. we going to chat beer, we chat comics, we're going to maybe chat other stuff. Depends on how drink we get. Um, but we hope to be done in, you know, every, oh, serving all your beer and comic needs in about 90 minutes. Uh, to my right, in the middle, is uh, Kingdom Comics and Games himself, um, Andrew. And uh, on, my, on the far right uh, is Mr. Glass City Comics, Dave Crana, uh, and I'm also here. So, uh, yeah, and we're, we're really lucky this week that we're going to have a, a like, we're, I'm going to attempt to uh, not butcher the name, but we have a we have a special guest, Nina Daisy Aberline. Yes, she's nodding <laughs> in the green room. <laughs> um, so she's a. Um, I quite like. A, I'm going to ask her when she comes on, but she it, she refers to herself as a young comic creator. Um, so I I'm a, I'm a high school teacher, and there's nothing there's nothing quite like feeling old when you didn't realize how old you were than working in education because you spent you're either young or old if you work with teenagers you know so i i, I you know what? i have been feeling this exact same thing very recently my boss um has had a had his bank manager visit him just the other day and he's walking around the the business walking around the the, the, the place i work with his bank manager and i'm looking at this guy thinking i'm fucking older than you mate how can you be a bank manager <laughs> and I hears me running about serving tables. <laughs> I was thinking, have you seen, have you seen that Burnison sketch where they're, um, they're they're in their early thirties? The guy, the two boys are in their early thirties, and they decide they're going to try and chat up the young girls, and they're like, oh, they're about nineteen. They're like, oh, but mate, like we're successful older men, like. And then as it like as the conversation continues, they get older and older, and by the end of it, they're like, <laughs> right hand, that's us off, and then they they, they move away <laughs> in the mobility scooters. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what Nina's going to do. She's going to make us feel really old, I think. <laughs> okay. What we should do? Um, I, we should do what my my wife does. My wife is in the Rotary Club, so she's the youngest member of our Rotary Club because the Rotary Club is usually for like ladies in there. So, like do, do think, the Rotarians are like usually fifty or sixty. So do, do you think she's we part. should maybe join like a like a bowling club, for example? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what is, he, he the youngest is a problem. <laughs> we, could just, we could just join camera. <laughs> aye, aye, the, the Ale Association. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right then. Yeah, anyway, um, without further ado, here is uh, this week's guest, Nina. Hey. Hi. I'm not Hi. that young. I just forgot to remove it from the description. How long? How how long have you been young? <laughs> How long have you been young? <laughs> like but yeah, I also work in education. I work a lot uh, with teenagers, and and so forth. So so I, I get that. So Sometimes. You're not a teenager. No, 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 not not for a long time now. Right. Yeah, I mean, right. because I'm wearing a flower crown, my, my gray like I have like a really thick gray streak, but because of the flower crown, it's not really visible right now. So that's good. Yeah, I like your flower crown. It's very, oh, very cool. well. Thank like you. It. We need to talk about gray and hair or anything like that. I think that would be more lack of as I have. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you? So you're in a, you're you're our very first Italian. I was a bit. I, I, I may have said that wrong. Actually, you're our first guest from who's coming from Italy during this conversation. Are you Italian? Well, my passport says I am, so I guess so. <laughs> That's, that's quite a, that's quite a well, political statement. My passport, my passport says I'm British, but you know. <laughs> I mean, technically so does mine, but like... But yeah, uh, born in London, live in Italy, lived half my life in Canada, but I'm in Italy now, so there we go. Well, where was in Canada? Uh, Vancouver. Mm, cool. Um, my, my pal stays out there actually at the moment in Vancouver. She says it's absolutely lovely. I don't I don't think she's coming home actually. I think she's just <laughs> needed to stay there. Oh, we came back because the food was awful. <laughs> so was the weather. <laughs> that's, um, that's a fairly, that's a pretty good justifiable reason not to like, <laughs> stay in a place. Like, I'd, I'd... Yeah, it was so freaking wet. Like, oh my goodness. Hmm. Well, have you ever visited Scotland before? 
No, I haven't been north of London in the UK. Right. No, no, actually, really. I have. No, 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 I haven't. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, the weather here is not so great either, especially at the moment. I don't know. I'm not too sure what it's like with you two guys are at the moment, but down Glasgow, neck of the woods, it's pouring with rain and grey as hell. Yeah, it's pretty blustery here, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's Andrew. pretty blustery. Uh, Andrew's fine. Uh, Andrew, um, me and Andrew were recognising a wee bit of feedback. So apologies if you're listening in the audio and you're like. <laughs> So Andrew's a bit to see him sort of that. Uh, yeah, so um, I have some interview questions for you, Nina. Oh, okay. One. Who are you? Um, uh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm, 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 I'm an Italian, Canadian, Pasifarian comic artist that likes the brown, I like bears, and I like pasta. <laughs> I was what's past the I was wondering, like, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a religious uh, education teacher to trade, so I was like, I've heard you use the, the your past cup, and I've heard you refer to yourself as a past before. I'm like, what is that? Is it just you like pasta? No, it, it it's a religion that was kind of like born uh, as a sort of like rebellion uh, against the uh, the use of religion for political reasons. Okay. Especially in the United States, uh, you know, where like people bring in religion for for political matters, and so it was kind of like born as a as a as a, a, a rebellion against that. But as it like grew globally, it's starting to be a sort of like a, like symbol of drunken pirates who fight for civil rights, pretty much. Nice. Uh, that's pretty that cool. Sounds good to me. Um. Oh, we could have a completely different podcast about that. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm just waiting for Andrew to come back and join us um, before we talk about beer. So, um, is it? I don't know. Do you identify within a, a Christian denomination then, or nee, no, mm. no? I mean, my 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 boyfriend is part of my my French Catholic as hell, um, <laughs> but I don't go to mass with him. It's too early in the morning. Oh yeah, especially on Sunday. <laughs> Who, yeah, who, I always say this. My my, my wife's um, uh, mum's quite uh, is, is quite Christian, quite religious and stuff, and she always goes to church on a Sunday morning. And I'm always like, why are you have it on a fucking Sunday morning? Why can't you have it like a Wednesday night or something like that? You know, it's just yeah. I don't think it's supposed to be convenient. I don't think that's like a, I don't think, I don't think they're like. <laughs> no, I mean, come on, it's the modern world, you know, I mean, who's not having a few beers on a Saturday night It's going to get up early? And, and even if you do have a few beers on a Saturday night and you do get up early and go to church or chapel on a Sunday morning, you'll be weak in a booze. I mean, no one wants to know, see that or smell that, you know. It's, yeah, it, it, takes, it must take some commitment because when I, I used to run five-a-side football teams, uh, I, I used to be the, I say run a five-a-side football team, I mean, I used to be the one that chaired the WhatsApp group for five-a-side football teams and I uh, Trying to get five boys to show up on a Sunday evening for a game of football is like is nigh on impossible. So like, fair play to the, the fair play to the church for managing to keep the numbers up. <laughs> it's been, it's, well, yeah, to a certain extent anyway, I think they're dwindling a little bit. You know, th- this is totally off kind of, well, totally off topic, but not really what we're talking about. Do, do you have humanism in Italy? Humanism, what do you mean like a school subject? No, it's like a uh, it's, all, it's, 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 it's a non-religious religion that believes in I, living your life as if this is all that we get and that I, there's no after life. So you should be religious religion. Well done, done, Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> you should be now rather than doing things to try and get yourself a better life in the afterlife. Is my uh, camera on that better now? Well, you're, you're, you're you look beautiful now. and you sound even more beautiful. Or... <laughs> I've got a specialist microphone, but it, it, um, it broken down, so the microphone is being used from the camera, which is worth considerably less than the mic. So the quality wise, <laughs> yeah, nine minutes without really talking anything. I think that's a new record, Andrew. Yeah. Well, and it, to, to quickly answer your question, I'm pretty sure, like that, like we do have it, but because of how incredibly prominent Christianity is, like people don't really. Yeah. talk about things outside of that much at all i think catholicism is massive in italy isn't it I mean, it's, it's, it's massive so it's massive. it's like og though in, in, in italy isn't it like it's like yeah we yeah. Hate them shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the pope's our next door neighbor 
<laughs> knocking on the wall like, on a Saturday night, like, go and keep it down. Some of us got work in the morning. <laughs> Does he play, play, play top set on Saturday night? Does he? <laughs> You've parked your mobile in my spot. You move it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Right. <laughs> um, so, at this part of the podcast, we normally go around our uh, around what we're drinking, and um, it's um it's really nice to see before we even got to that part of the conversation pre recorded. Um, uh, Vina's husband passed the beer over <laughs> from, from 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 sort of right off camera. We're like, yes, <laughs> she could be included in this part of the podcast, which is amazing. <laughs> We have had comic guests who don't drink, and then we've had a uh, beer guests who don't read comics. And so, and we've you, had you hosts, answered, the, answered the question that we were going to ask you. So, yeah. we've had hosts to get drunk too much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, we were scared that Colin's not here because Colin, uh, Colin usually keeps us right. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. so um, well, we go right. Nina, do you want to start us off with what you're drinking, and then we'll, we'll, we'll just sure. I'm drinking straight from Sardinia, Iknusa, non-filtered, half a liter. It's uh, an Italian beer. Uh, it's blonde from Sardinia, and it comes in a very nice glass bottle. And it's personally one of my favorite ones because it's cheap and really good, especially like the the, the price quality relationship. Yeah, yeah. That is a ratio you've always got to think about. You know, that good beer can be very expensive and bad beer is very cheap. So what you look for is something which meets halfway that yeah. good beer, but inexpensive um, yes. and not mass produced. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's a. Uh, that's, 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 well, that's a, that's a good way to judge your alcoholic beverages, for sure. That's how we pretty much say, you know, do everything in Scotland. It's like, how much does it cost in relation to a beer? <laughs> Every time we go abroad, it's not... Think, you know, well, it's that expensive. affects me more I think, when it comes to wine. It's like, you know, you, you, your, your wine, the very first, like the first bottle of wine you open, if you're at a dinner party or something like that, you open the nice wine, it's the first bottle. You know, that's, that's the eight, ten, eight pound, ten pound bottle or whatever like that. See, once you've drunk that bottle, the second bottle of wine can be anything. It can be three pound ninety nine. Yeah. Tesco pack. Um, once you've done the first one, and you didn't care. <laughs> I can you don't care. Uh, I am. Um, the other question you must ask me that is, what percent is it? It's five percent. Oh, that's all right. Not that's sort of a. Let's see. Um, Another travel from us. What? <laughs> seal of approval from us. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what are you drinking, David? I'll go. Right. Okay. To go from quality to <laughs> fucking quantity. <laughs> I'm sorry, lads. Listen, I don't believe in waste. All right. And I had a few beers on Monday night, and I got a little bit carried away. So I'm trying to stay good for the rest of the week. So I'm not drinking at all. I don't even have a have a wee whiskey with me tonight. So I'm, I'm on the non non alcoholic. Uh, brew dog, I'm sorry. I have bought this. I bought a case of twelve before Christmas. I've still not drank them. I'm not going to fling them in the bin. So I will be drinking them. We know how brew dog is the way it is at the moment. It's getting lots of bad press, and yeah, I totally agree with it. And the chances are, I won't rush out to buy any more brew dog stuff. But I'm not going to fling this stuff in the bin. So I'm going to drink it. And I'll be honest with you, as far as non-alcoholic beer is concerned, it's no bad. I do, I do quite like it. And if you say if you're trying to stay off the booze for a wee while, you know, I would recommend that you try some non-alcoholic stuff. And the BrewDog stuff is okay. It's up to you where your morals lie. You know, okay, um, we, we, we did this last week, mate. Can you just stop talking about it? Shows the <laughs> we're, we're all still, we're all still a bit sad when, as, as we've just had a conversation about the quality of the beer and the cost of the beer, and we're you know, and BrewDog were BrewDog for the longest time were they um. They, they they were that they were that soft spot. And they were not, really not, not, not bad and decent decent price. Mm-hmm. And uh, but they also but they introduced a third level, which is like I don't know. It's like um it's it's like football hiring predators <laughs> and Kirkcaldy oh, and trying work out trying work out where the three of them line up. No, no, we'll, we'll just not bother going into that. We're not even that conversation. That's no. uh, that's yeah. 
you know what? Do you know what we take from that? I'm not a football fan, but I'm not a football guy, right? And what we take about that story is, I thought Wraith Rovers was. I didn't realise it was a real team. Perfect. Do you know what the thing? Do you know what the thing I've taken from that story? Is a uh, when they've been the BBC have been filming on Kirkcaldy High Street quite a lot this week, and I, I'm just looking over at the guy's shoulder to see if I can see Andrew Shaw. <laughs> Beautifully local local story, which I'm sure Nina has no idea what's 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 going on. I know. Anyway, it's not local, local, local. It was on absolute radio this morning. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Um, but yeah, um, as I was saying, like, I, like I think that the brew dog, and that's probably on reflection. Once once you get past all the shit about. Uh, like, like what, what, when the dust settles, and hopefully, like people, people have seen the light, and um, hopefully, Brewdog will will make the changes they've promised to make. Um, that's one of the things that I had again. Really we sort of went through this at last week, but I don't think they can. They can. They can. go back to being the enfant terrible of of British brewing. You know, the the plucky underdogs when their company's valued at one point eight billion pounds. They just can go back to that now. They're they're the man. They're the established. I, now. They are what they set out not to be. They, yeah, they've, they've sold out. And so <laughs> what we need now is for a new plucky young brewer to come through and possibly not build their business on uh, misogyny and, and bullying. Yes. That's, a, that's, that's, a, that's Colin saying religion and football in the first 15 I'm minutes. We should have been um, saying God's not here for a while. That's what happens when you're not here, Sam. here for a while, but uh, you're only having any of it. So. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so also, also what I We had politics just before we went to air as well, Colin, but... Um, uh, well, so we're, we're we're hitting all the we're hitting all the beer and podcast the beer and comic podcast to this. back to me. People don't come here for politics and, and, and they no. don't come here for football. There's massive, <laughs> there's massive amounts of podcasts on politics. There's massive amounts of podcasts on football. There's probably podcasts which cross over the two. People come here for beer and comics. Let's right then. Sorry, 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 sorry. Because uh, uh, you know I'm a sucker for a well, um, a well, art- artisted, artisan, artist. Well drawn, well painted tin. Yes, <laughs> I'm, drinking, I'm, I'm drinking Voodoo Ranger at the moment. Oh, nice. How, how nice is that? You see, cool. you see all, my, all my cans at the background. I just, I, can, I see things like this, and I just can't not get them. Um, Where is that from? Belgian Easy IPA. Um, five point three percent. It's it's not weak, but it's not hugely strong. Uh, you know, it's not it's not like the ridiculous speech bubble stuff there, which is. Seven point odd percent. Seven um, point seven point nuclear. It's, it's, yeah. it's a hazy, a hazy IPA. As you can see, this is how beer should should look. You can do the deal. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> and it's it's much better than the sort of mass produced pap coming from Belgium. It's it's much better than the sort of mass produced pap which are made by certain Scottish companies that will no longer burn much. So that's Where did you get it from, Andrew? And how much? Did you get it? I, bought it, I bought this online from a well-known um, online beer thing, where you can you can get boxes from them of different stuff, but you can also buy uh, four packs and six packs of stuff if, if you like it. What's the stuff? Yeah. That's finished. I'm drinking this, which is another New, new, new England IPA, because no doubt. Oh, so I, I like salt stuff. This is oh, yeah. This is another one. Yeah, I think I've tried a few of that actually. And if we really run on, I've also got this one sitting in reserve. Which is oh, uh, hold on, let, let me bring that up because I really like, like the can. What's that one? What was the last one? Uh, two tribes. Um, oh, I like two tribes stuff. Again, I think I got them in a. Such got... peculiar graphics. It is. It's like it's like it was thrown together by like a, a, a twelve year old in in you know first time using Photoshop or something like that. But I like it. So, it, 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 like, it, it reminds me of like when uh, you know the, the episodes of The Apprentice when they need to come up with a hip new like, and then they've given they're, they're given twenty minutes to do like branding on like a toothbrush or something. Yeah, they they always do this they're like for beer or something like that. The equivalent would be you know they'd say oh, we're going to make a new beer. Um, who who likes beer? None of them drink beer. They're all wine. So somebody will go. Oh, I, I had beer once when I was fourteen. Okay, you're the expert. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, that's actually about five ten years ago as well. <laughs> I've just watched this week's episode and they were playing around. They were they were making their own beer and they they all fucked it as you can imagine. It was they were like, making oh, beer, weren't they? Yeah, it wasn't very good and I was it was quite disappointing actually. And I did spend the whole like the Apprentice is one of those shows where I will watch it and be like, oh, I could do that better. But specifically, like we have done that better. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, so Neil's saying that he's drinking a, a 5% Golden Goose Lager from the Goose Island. Mm. I like Goose Island. Oh, they either. sell Goose Island uh, at one of the, the pubs here nearby on the top. Nice. Cool. Yeah, it's quite popular, Karen. It's in most of the supermarkets here, I think, yeah. anyway, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's quite good. They're, um, they've got, you know, the wee four packs that they do. Like they're, I think that's their kind of craft beer line because they've got the big ones as well, don't they? But yeah, so we yeah. four, the wee four pack, I think, I'm. So I've, I've definitely drank them a few times. They're good. Yeah, they're good. Um, We're very different of Belgian beer, um, but I'm, I'm warming to it in my older age. So. Yeah, yeah. I've got a soft spot for Belgian beer because my uh, my friend Oud is from Brussels and she brings back quite a lot of Belgian beer whenever she goes with her husband and they, they bring it back and come and hang out with me and Claire and I get to try all these beers that I would not normally be aware of. So, cool. um, probably good. I, I am on the conversations of mixing a ca- um, cost with beer. I There was a reduced section in Asda the, earlier today that I didn't know existed for the craft beer. So it's like end of line end of line stuff. So I managed to get a can of Siren, a uh, Soundwave IPA for uh, 95 pence, which is an absolute steal. <laughs> I think normally about £2.20, £2.30. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, uh, can. Be- beautiful can. Uh, beautiful beer, actually. And I'm just moving on to this, uh, one of my favourite breweries, um, a Bavarian style wheat beer with hints of spice fruit and zest. Um, 6.2% for a uh, pearl from Inner Bay Brewing in uh, Everkeaton. So, Inner I know, 20, minute, 20 minute walk from Andy's house. Yes, very, very close, very close, just over the hill. Mm-hmm. Just a really amazing, uh, a really amazing brewery. Um, I went to the Caledonian Craft Beer Merchant, which is my local beer shop, last week um, for the first time in a wee while because it was the it was payday last Thursday after that horrible six weeks in January that everyone has to deal with. Um, so, I went in and just spent quite a fair amount of money on just nice looking beer so i grabbed it but i, did, I always find was a bit like um maybe what we were saying a couple weeks ago when you go to comic cons and like you have the idea that you're going to go out and you're going to find new creators and you end up spending a fortune on stuff by guys you already know um i find that when i'm in the beer shop it's almost exactly the same i'm like oh i'm going to try all these new cans that uh, colin's got in and then i'm like oh, i could just buy inner bay because i know it's amazing <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I know the brewer, so I'm like, okay. But, um, but yeah. Um, so that's your choices of beer for this evening. Mm-hmm. Uh, cheers. 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 Uh, cheers. So, um, oh, I don't know how I did that. Hold on, hold on. There we go. Sorry. Fucking share this, Andrew. You, wait, at what point are you going to actually just take over? Right? Take, take over. Take over. I'll take over the, 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 the electric side of it. It's going to be. It's going to be easier. I think so. <laughs> you just just like, well, to, like, to zoom up so folks' eyes and shit. Um, okay. Um, so Nina, thank, I can't thank you enough for getting in touch. Um, you 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 messaged us and we're asking if you could we could we could chat and like just wanted. We thought it would just be really nice to get you in the show. I think it was what maybe December you got in touch with us. And maybe probably yeah. um but uh you were you, you were you you were in touch with us to discuss your new kickstarter which is is ongoing but now funded so do you want to talk a little bit about what your project is sure so i'm currently crowdfunding the first plus second volume of my uh girls love monster girl comic and in case you don't know what monster girls are they're like girls that are like either like part monster or like part animal or something like that and so pretty much like to give just to give a a quick pitch if you like falcons if you like drama if you like girls kissing then you might like uh sunrise blossom which is a coming of age story about ivy a young falcon harpy abandoned by her birth mother and raised by owls and while traveling with her sister to learn about human culture, Ivy has an argument with her and is separated from her, only to be picked up by a human woman, Violet, who helps her discover herself and bloom into womanhood, emotionally and physically. <coughs> but it's only after a dramatic turn of events that Ivy discovers her romantic feelings for her human companion. While in the second volume, After the dramatic ending of Volume 1, Ivy spends some time with a kind old Scottish man, 
but when his real daughter shows up, it's time for Ivy to return to her love interest. Wicked. Yeah, that's um, that's it's, it's it's pretty pretty wide range of of yeah of stuff there. Yeah, like um, <laughs> where, 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 did, where, did, where did where did the writer and the artist Nina? Uh, yeah, I do everything. I do the oh. the the writing, the art, the lettering, the managing, the marketing. I'm a one person monster machine. I'm a nice one, good stuff. The characters oh, thank are you. lovely. Thank you. I always find it very strange when you look at a cartoon character and think, I kind of fancy her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am. Um, I think you've nailed particularly. I think you've nailed the Scottish character there. Apart yeah. from the fact he doesn't swear enough. Oh, um, it's because it's it's also a bit child friendly, and I'm currently okay. on my third Outlander rewatch. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course you are. Just down the road here in Kirkcaldy as well. Uh, I'm on my I'm on my uh, third uh, lawsuit for almost knocking over people that stand in front of my car trying to take photographs of <laughs> of areas of Fife that were filmed in Lake Landers. <laughs> oh, the to the devil's pulpit. Right, I actually have to drive past it if I'm dropping off Eli, my kid, to um, his nana's house, and that road is a nightmare. The tourists can pretty get to that pulpit in that bloody well TV show. Anyway, that's another thing. Yeah. Do you want to talk us through what's on the screen just now? This is well smart. Yeah, so it's the trailer for the second volume, and the beginning focuses mostly on the beginning of the second volume, and then it focuses on the highlights. Uh, of the second volume, kind of like giving a a, a teaser, like a taste of, of what it's like. So like a, a bit of like show don't tell kind of thing. So like I show some of like the most interesting scenes of, of the comic and I trying to leave a sort of like mis taste of a, a bit of a for mystery and a bit of like wanting for more, hopefully. So it's, yeah, it's pretty much a trailer that gives a quick visual explanation of the contents of the second volume. So as I mentioned before, Ivy, the main character, who is like half human and half falcon, uh, she lives with an old man for a while. Uh, when his real daughter returns, however, she must go back to her love interest and confront her problems head first. Hmm. Looks very good. Looks excellent, actually. Oh, thank you. Yeah. How did you how did you come up with the idea? Because it's um like there's obviously there's fan the elements of fantasy in there. Obviously there's um it's it's transcontinental in some of the contexts. You know, you're, it's 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 set in various places around the world. Um, and also there's um the the, the, the main characters identify are, are are part of are on the LGBT spectrum. So there's um there's just loads going on there. So where 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 did you? Uh, where were you inspired to, to for these different elements? Well, um, there is this series called Daily Life with Monster Girls that is like absolutely very, 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 very different from from the story that I've written. But I, I really, really enjoyed the the character concepts that went to behind the creation of of that story, and so um, I, I wanted to make it mine a bit in a way. And when I was uh, in my second year of comic school, one of the assignments that they gave us was to create a short four, five, six page comic um, in a style that was anything as long as it wasn't realistic. So some anything that was like a little bit cartoonier than, than the standard. And like uh, on the, at the top of my head, I had this idea of this woman driving her, her car at night you know, like after work, she's tired, she's driving home, and all of a sudden she accidentally hits uh, a big bird with her, her car. Uh, so like they, they, they crash and she runs out, she tries to aid the bird, uh, brings it back home with her to try and nurse it back to health, promising to bring it, to bring it to the vet the next day. But when she wakes up the next morning, she wakes with a half naked harpy uh, in her bed. And I absolutely fell in love with the concept uh, at the time. And so when I finished the projects that I was working on back then, I dove right into this immediately. 
That's really, that's really cool. Um, where's the, um, are, you, are you interested in sort of the mysticism of like, you know, like Harpy and the, the mythology of these sort of different, um, where does that come from? Um, well, I guess that, I don't know, I've always had a bit of a like fascination and like love for the kind of supernatural stories, but that like still fit into our world. Because it has that like sort of like I escapism feeling where there's like this unfamiliar but like interesting element that like fits perfectly in a world that is still like your everyday yeah, world. It's kind of connected almost. It's like something that can be completely, you know, out there and crazy, but also it feels like it's connected within your world as well. Yeah. I, I yeah, like exactly. That. So 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 like vampire stories or yeah. like werewolf stories. Or like even like classic Greek mythology, or uh, like I don't know Egyptian mythology, where there's like you know these like crazy creatures, but they do fit uh, like a, as part of like this world, and it's something that I've, I've always found more interesting than than you other genres. So, what I'm rested for vampires, almost as it seems to get trying to bring them into the mainstream, and you know. Yeah. The, Harpies have notoriously bad press over the time. They yes. Cases, which is know, actually like, <laughs> yeah, which is actually one of like the main themes of uh, of the comic because yes, harpies do notoriously have bad press, but who gave them bad press? Homer, yeah, Homer, I think possibly. Yeah, but not not Homer. Like yes, Homer did write about them, but it was. Uh, mo Jeez. normally men in stories written by men that demonize these creatures. And so taking these creatures and like looking at them from a very different perspective, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like show like this different different sides of this creature that traditionally has been demonized, but why has it been demonized? Kind of like, yes, in some stories they killed men, but then why did they kill them in the first place? Maybe they just wanted to eat. Maybe it was survival. Maybe they were defending themselves. Who knows? We only have men's stories about them. We never heard their side. So I like this idea of gaslighting mythological. Uh... <laughs> All the um, you know, all Homer and, and, and Sophocles and, and you know, they, all of them, Virgil, all all men. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's totally spawn. And and, 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 and and Furies and things like this, you know, all, all of these sort of really really bad ones, the Sphinx and stuff like this, were all portrayed as females and evil. Sort of characters, there was no. I love this whole we weaponizing their sexuality as well. Like even you think, even think back to like portrayals of um, religious, uh, not religious. Sorry, that's that's. Um, I can still see Colin going Roger, Roger, and football. <laughs> and, no, um, a historical historical female characters. You know, like um, a, or, or historical female figures. Sorry, like there's a whole kind of that discussion about sexuality or. You know, there's their, uh, or they've had to reject elements of their gender in order to get forward in life, and um, just the sort of the, 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 you know, gender becomes one of the key features of their, uh, of their story. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, it's not that's obviously not prevalent in sort of male dominated culture. It's because exactly, it, it's also going to have to be. And many women historically, like, since always, but also very much still to this day are demonized sometimes even for just rejecting men. Mm -hmm. And so like one of the reasons why I chose a harpy creature was like, what if people demonize her or like demonize her species because they rejected men because they didn't like men, they were lesbians. And so <laughs> that's also like one of the reasons why I chose to make a lesbian harpy my main character. Nice, I like it, that's awesome. That's quite it's a... Like I always go on about um, uh, paganism in the UK and kind of Europe. Christianity basically just overlapped all their holidays and things over paganism. And then everything that was good luck in pagans, pagan forms, uh, became bad luck for Christianity. So everything that we think is bad luck, if you're a pagan, it's actually good luck. And so that's kind of the same kind of idea. Obviously, it's men and women, so it's obviously a bit different. But um, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's a cool idea. I like it. Like a lot. Thank you. It's, it's 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 still a dominating culture, or our, our culture. It's our culture new rating, isn't it? Is, yeah, it's a culture that wants to insert its dominance by um, demonizing the, the existing. and demonizing something else. Yeah. <laughs> so 
So um, a lot to learn from history. Unfortunately, we don't normally do it. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's <laughs> like, So um, yeah, uh, you said that you. So how is the comic been received? You said you said to us earlier that um, a lot of uh, you, you've got a lot of um, following in sort of the states. A lot of comic uh, orders come from from the states. How, mm -hmm. how has it? How has your comic been received? Well, um, before crowdfunding it on like Indigo and Kickstarter and stuff. Um, it, so before being a, a, a physical comic, it's a web comic that uh, I've been posting for the past three years or so on Webtoons and Tapas, where the US is kind of like one of the major audiences for those platforms. And on uh, Webtoons in particular, which is like the main web comic hosting platform uh, at the moment. It's currently got something like I'm very, very, very close to 2000 uh, subscribers and I just reached 200,000 page views on the comic. So that's definitely wow. you know, like influenced how particularly America, uh, the Americans uh, view my my comic. But I think it's also because um, a lot of my promoting online has been in more general like monster girl groups or like um, girls love content groups or like indie comic creator groups, all of which seem to have a mostly American user base. So I think that might also be the reason for it. And because here in Europe, um, we don't just have one language. So it's hard to market, uh, like in Europe itself, it's hard to market like outside of the UK and Ireland. Mm. Because it's an Engli it, the, it's written in English. Right. You, you mentioned the Kickstarter. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 200,000 views and um, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive. You obviously got a bit of a, you know, you've got a following there and a, a fan base. So that's, that's, that's excellent. Um, I'll put the, the link to that up as well. Um, so I was going to say, so you, you mentioned Kickstarter um, and also Indiegogo. Do you find mm -hmm. one works better than the other? Do you always run oh, them side yes. side, side or how do you Kickstarter do it? was so, so much better. Right. So much better. Like at least for, for the type of, of content that I create. Because Indiegogo, like uh, for volume one, uh, which I've got here, Volume 1, I crowdfunded on Indiegogo and it pretty much all it did was a sort of platform to collect money and I had to bring people to the platform. Sorry. But on Kickstarter, like most of the people that have backed the Kickstarter didn't even come from outside places. They like found it on Kickstarter and backed it directly from there. So there's like a lot of people who like even just like browse the website seeing, hmm, what should I invest on? What should I invest in today? Yeah, and yeah. people don't do that on Indiegogo. So it's a lot better for that. I mean, Indiegogo does have a few perks that I really enjoyed that I wish Kickstarter would have. Like, first of all, being like um, the ability to show more in the pre-launch phase of the comic. Uh, or of the project in general, because like in the pre-launch phase on Kickstarter, you can show like one image and that's it. Mm -hmm. While with Indiegogo, you can show a video, you can put descriptions, you can put several images so that people who open the page have a better idea of what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and also with Indiegogo, you have the possibility of, of having like secret links. So like, for example, through Indiegogo, I could have um, a link that I could share just to my patrons for example, so that if they wanted to back the campaign, they would have like a 15% discount or something like that, which alas, isn't really possible on uh, on Kickstarter. Right. And so do you, do you run a, a patron as well then? Mm-hmm. Right. Cool. Um, really Patreon seems to be like a, a big deal at the moment. I, I know a lot of comic creators that are jumping onto Patreon just now. Um, do you find that works well for you? Is that something that other possible comic creators would think you should think about doing? Well, I think that every single creator should have a Patreon, like, yeah. no matter what they create. And, like, whether people go to their Patreon and start pledging to their Patreon or not, 
doesn't matter. At least you have it there, like available as an option, kind of. Okay, yeah. And uh, my my Patreon has been going rather well, though. Like most of my patrons, honestly, don't give a crap about my comic. <laughs> they they mostly pledge because through Patreon, I uh, offer monthly commissions to anyone who pledges ten dollars or more. So that like every month, I do like ten or fifteen dollars worth of commissions. So that they like kind of pay monthly, and in like six months or so, they get a really nice illustration. But like they didn't have to tear a hole through their wallet because they only pay like fifteen dollars a month. And so most of my patrons like just pledge for for that feature. Which I don't know. I'm not complaining. It's good. It's bringing people yeah, in. So that's good, great. Definitely. Nice, nice, nice. See, that's the problem. See, because I'm just a writer, so I think it's. I'm, uh, I think it'd be difficult as a just as a as a plain writer to kind of, you know, pull off a patron. I keep thinking about it. I'm going we, to. Have to we look we, into we certainly talked about it as a podcast briefly as well, and uh, yeah. I think I, I just don't know what we would offer as like pledges. Is like, uh, we will we'll insult you once a month. Though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure there's people who'd be into that. <laughs> the rain, actually. Yeah, yeah, I mean, degra yeah. degradation kinks are a lot more common yeah. than you might think. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking that. I was just thinking more along the lines of like, or we could we could give you, I don't know, we can give you a cuddle every time we see you at a comic con or something. <laughs> just like, that may work. Um, so, how long have you been doing this? Then I'm assuming um, it's not your full full time job. Um, yeah. So how long have you been kind of doing the comic thing? Um, as a, you know, how long have you been doing it? That's the question. Well, uh, I've been creating comics almost like r regularly, almost nonstop, uh, since like the last year or so of high school. Um, right. Like immediately after high school, I went to comic school uh, for for three years. You know, like to you know improve, study learn the theory and like learn how to like get even better at what I do. Uh, then I graduated, uh, started working, but like continued doing comics on the side. So I've been doing comics regularly for about six, six and a half years now. You went to comic school, was that, was that Canada or was that Britain or was that Italy? Here in Italy. Here in Italy. So they, they have, you can actually specifically course to do comics. I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of one. Um, yeah, it's yeah. like it's like a, a trade school, but mm -hmm. they teach you like comics and illustration and storyboarding and writing, uh, scripting, lettering, and all the That's necessary cool. parts for comics. That's excellent. You, you can you can study. Was it Dundee University? They have they have comic they have comics related courses, don't they? Yeah, that's some true. universities do. Study and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's academic rather than creative, though, isn't it? It's yeah, but also like only like the ones in the really big cities do, mm -hmm. because the ones in like the slightly small like that the art schools in the start s s slightly smaller cities are like stuck in the eighteen hundreds. So like the courses they have are like oil painting, watercolors, antique restoration. And that's it, <laughs> pretty much. That's what makes Dundee so interesting, I think, because it has a comics course, but everything else about the city is stuck in the eighteen hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> Dundee is up and coming, from what I hear. City of culture, I think, is it not? Dun Dun Dundee's Dun Dundee's reckoned to be for the last three or four years, because my kids are at university or and just started or just nearly finishing. Dundee's reckoned to be the best place in Scotland, the best right. unit in the city. It for, is amazing. Um, for students in, in Scotland, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Dundee University graduate, so like um, I'm just being I'm just being an artist. Like <laughs> and I, I really enjoyed my time there, and um, it is a lovely place. And I'm going to be spending I'm going to be I'm going to be spending a day there this Saturday, so I should probably can we disclaimer up there. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff actually likes Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's too late. Dundee stuck in 1800s. So, <laughs> that's kind of the thing. There'll be people at the bridge, people at the bridge boycotting you. I'm going to arrange it. I'm going to, I'm going to mess with people. So, it's going to be you, though. Hey, it's going to be like, oh, there he goes again, trying to wind me up. <laughs> um, right, so, uh, how long have you got left? You are fully funded, aren't you, on Kickstarter? How, how, have, how have you found the process? Was it? Is it quite. I, I I find it quite stressful when I when I do a Kickstarter, but um, I know 
other folk like the process so it's i i enjoy it like it's like very rewarding but it is also like super tiring like the amount of advertising and marketing but in a way that isn't exaggeratingly annoying or obnoxious mm -hmm. it, it's hard you know like to like advertise it in a way that like makes it interesting and not just like ugh this bitch is showing her fucking lesbian birds again uh it's, it's hard to 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 <laughs> share it in a way that is interesting um yeah. but like have to, you can have to separate your your, your um, the people that you know your, you know your actual own social life with the people that you don't know you know you have to think when i'm going to post this out i need to think of people that i don't see in the street and you know and they may like it as opposed to the person that i went to school with that's kind of what you have to do i think yeah, yeah. I you know, you should have separate um, social media for things like that. But back, I became of the opinion that why shouldn't you say, like, obviously you want to put this out to all the comic fans that you know, but why shouldn't you put this out to your friends as well? If your friends are only going to support you to do the things, they're all your friends. Strangers are only going to do it. And, um, you know, if, if you put that out there that you're working on this, you know, if, if, if that was your friend, I would be absolutely supportive and absolutely supporting everything that you did. But that's just That's really point. sweet. But yeah, well, um, so. So like in, in the pre-launch phase, I was like making and sharing memes every other day. And I actually made a collection of the ones that I found most interesting. And I put them at the bottom of the Kickstarter page. I have like a sort of like I meme gallery. We can, Sorry? We can look at them. <laughs> yeah, sure. So like I've got a, a meme, like a sort of meme gallery at the bottom of the page. Uh, and then like ever since the campaign launched, I've been doing like sort of like day one, page one, x percent funded uh with like the stickers of like the kickstarter and the logo and like sharing them all over the facebook's and the twitters and the instagrams and the discords and the reddit so like pretty much sharing it everywhere which like has been like really tiring because it means that every single day i have to put a half hour aside to like make the image and like post it absolutely freaking everywhere um but it's been really rewarding like it the, the the campaign hasn't really reached a plateau kind of that a lot of campaigns reach often enough so like maybe i've had like two days in which i haven't had any new backers but like i've had like a new backer almost every day since the campaign launched so that's going good hmm. hopefully that, that continues to say we can see that you're um you know you're well through your pledge goal already mm -hmm. ten to go so you know, hopefully you'll unlock some more of those stretch goals and, and, and get the book out to, to more and more people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, currently we've, we've unlocked the first two stretch goals, which means lots of free stickers for everyone who orders a physical copy. Yes! I love the stickers, man. I love it. I think I love I love the idea of like making memes about your work. Like I wish I thought about that. I, I, quite, I quite like a good meme and I never considered doing them for the spirit of NK or like I think I can have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, and also like people enjoy watching, uh, looking at memes sometimes and it can make like whatever the meme is about more interesting to them if they don't know what's it about already. Yeah. Sometimes you can like, I don't know, you can like, I, yeah, it's, it's like sometimes I'll see a meme and I'm like, I want to know why that's funny. And then you'll, you, you know, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but that, um, let's go. And, uh, I think if it has to be explained to you, Jeff, it's probably not. Sure. <laughs> Why does everyone keep saying that to my jokes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that, that, uh, that's absolutely amazing. So, um, yeah, what do you um, what do you enjoy reading yourself? Like, because obviously, like, do you do you, do you find yourself drawn to um, the, the the sort of media that you you write yourself? Or yeah, definitely. Like. Um, well, when it comes to more traditional comics, um, I'm a slut for Harley Quinn. Like, I've got a tattoo, a massive Harley Quinn themed tattoo on my back. <laughs> um, but uh, aside from that, like, I read a lot of webtoon. Oh, thank you, Tomas. Mwah! Kisses. Thank you. So uh, I find myself reading a lot on webtoon, mostly because... Um, most of the comics are free to read and it's like an app on, on your phone so like you can read while you're on the crapper or whatever <laughs> and so most Wait, of them are like that, that, those are, that, Italian, that Italian influence in your dialect is just so <laughs> the crapper 
<laughs> yeah. So, um, so uh, most of the comics there are are free to read, but though there are like advertisements at the bottom uh, mm -hmm. of every chapter, you know, like to uh, support some of the creators, but not not all of them. And the the stories there, they're 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 really modern, I guess, and they've got most of them have got like like genres and writing techniques that are not found in many uh, traditional comics. Like it's very different from almost anything that like uh, Image or DC or Marvel or uh, Tunwe or like all the other big uh, comic uh, publishing companies have because there's a lot more artistic freedom uh, because it's, it's, it's a webcomic publishing platform and there's a lot, a lot of indie there. So there's a, like a lot of comics that are really original and really interesting. Webtoons is something we talk about quite a lot, isn't it? Like, I know webtoons. webtoons. Webtoons, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's big. I, I hear about it all the time, actually. I, I should really look into that as well. Sure. Yeah, it's currently the like number one webcomic uh, publishing and sharing platform there there is. Like in the early 2000s, like there used to be also like Smack Jeeves uh, and individual websites, but pff, no, they're slowing. They, they've they either died off or they're slowly dying off and Webtoons is kind of like taking the world by storm. Right, fair enough. Um, it's just so difficult. See, be, you're being the creator, you've also got to, you know, advertise and, you know, put yourself out there. So, it's, there's so much to do and sometimes it's just like, oh man, I used to take a step back. I just want to write comic books and, you know, have a good time. And it's, it's so, so difficult. There's so many different outlets to, to, to get mm -hmm. your stuff out. It's, it's, it's difficult to put it onto everywhere and upload it and spend the time marketing and advertising. Yeah. And, stuff. and then there's less time to create, you know. So it, it can be a bit difficult, but that's what you've got to do, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, fair play. Mm, cool. Do you have a, a, a goal at all? How, how many volumes do you think it's going to be the comic? Is it going to be an ongoing series? Is it uh, going to um, wrap up at any point? Or? Well, uh, at the current moment, I don't really plan to have more than maybe 10 volumes or so. Like right. with how like I've had the, the overarching plot organized and planned for the moment. But also every now and then, I absolutely love how you have a fridge right next to your station like that. I want that. <laughs> so we all want that. You know, I wish you could be like, oh yeah, man, like, you know, that's <laughs> like, it's just, you know, I, I got it installed for the pot. Jeff? He's frozen. He's actually all gone. He's gone. Yes, we all Rip. want that fridge, you know. We, we talk about it every week. <laughs> okay, uh, what was he saying before that? I got distracted. Yeah, you're talking, about, you're, you're, you're talking about maybe 10, 10 volumes, I think. Oh, yeah, about. right. I, like, I don't plan to have more than 10 or so you volumes. Pages in the first volume, if, if they're all similar size, that's going to be 2,000 pages. That's... No, well, not necessarily, because the first volume is, is really big. The first volume is, like, 223 pages. But the second one I decided to make significantly shorter, both because it means that I can crowdfund it and get it out to print and get it in people's hands more frequently, and because I'll, the second volume, uh, I can also afford printing it in color. Okay. So like the first volume is entirely in grayscale because 223 pages is really fucking expensive to, to, to print in, in full color. But like 53 pages with crowdfunding, I can afford that. Yes, yes. So yeah, that, so the, the first volume is in black and white. It, well, it's in grayscale. But it is it's pretty massive. Uh, second one is a bit shorter, 50, 50 something pages. The third volume is already all storyboarded and I started working on it today and it's also roughly 50 or so pages. So I don't plan to have roughly more than 10 volumes or so. But also like I, I keep getting mini plot point ideas here and there and I keep implementing them. <laughs> making everything longer but those i don't worst, man. those are the worst when you're writing something and you're like actually this would be a wee bit better if i had two pages here just just, yes. to fill out this, just to fill out that guy in the background's backstory so folk are folk think it's 
sad or when he dies. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But I don't want to do something like making it last as long as possible just because it's starting to be profitable. Because then I'd be sacrificing the quality of the story. Like yeah, once the comic reaches, once the story reaches a natural conclusion, I'll move on to do something else. That's quite noble, actually. But I imagine particularly in comics. Um, we talk about this, so we're all like movie geeks and television program geeks, and the the majority of these programs where the uh, the majority of these programs where they they reach a natural conclusion and then they bring in another couple of seasons, and you're like, wait a minute, like, yeah. um, so actually the fact that considering like you're saying you're recognizing profit and you're recognizing success, like squeeze it like like a lot of people would try and squeeze that for as much as they could. Yeah, whereas yeah. actually, I yeah, think it's. Yeah. A, a, Eric Kripke had five seasons of Supernatural in mind, and, and they told the whole story in five seasons. And at the end of the five seasons, yeah, you know, and went to hell and stuff like this. And he went, "That's that story told." Seven people, seasons later, <laughs> I mean, seven seasons more later. Exactly, <laughs> still running, and uh, yeah, those guys were getting older and older as it went along. So that's it. That's yeah, that's yeah, but not that, but not as much as Jared Padalecki's hair keeps getting longer and longer. That's Ben saying he crowdfunded 144 pages. So we, 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 we should, mm. um, I, I mean, uh, I was talking to Nina about the 77 earlier and saying that, you know, they're like one of the sort of bigger independent publishers in, in the UK just now and friends of the podcast. And um, yeah, so 144 pages, no change from seven grand on printing. <laughs> but how many copies also? How many copies? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask as well. Yeah, what's, yeah, your, print, what's your print one, Ben? <laughs> that's seven thousand copies, thanks. That's that's all right. That's not too bad. Yeah, maybe because normally I try to print maybe like a hundred copies at a time because I never know how like yeah. how successful it's going to be. Because when I first started getting involved in like conventions and stuff, uh, I thought like, yeah, people are gonna buy this. I'm gonna print as many as I can just because. And now I've got a freaking back room filled with 400 copies of a 10-page comic nobody wants! Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've all been there. I've got, uh, yeah, I've, got no way spare copies. I've got 200 spare copies of issue one of my series. I've, I've got 50... Uh, I counted it the other day, I've got 56 spare copies of issue two, and then I've got seven spare copies of issue three, because every time I've gone... Yeah, I need to be more realistic about these print runs. So, <laughs> you just print more, eh? You could just go back and print more of... of... Yeah. You yeah, which is yeah. also one of the reasons why I thought of doing, like, fewer um, volumes, but more crowd uh, funding campaigns. Like, maybe one every seven or eight months or so at the current pace in which I'm, I'm producing. So, like, a campaign every six... Uh, sorry, every seven or eight months or so. Um, also so that if like, I run out of copies, then I would also have the funds through the crowdfunding campaign to like reprint the first volumes if yeah. necessary. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I'm doing the mass that Ben said is there, so what, 2,000 copies of, of the 77 for 7 Ooh. grand? That's... Yeah, that's a lot. D50, D50. A lot of money. Yeah, that's, money. that's absolutely amazing, man. Um, Okay, um, well, we blend out. Do you want to hang around and chat about what we're reading in that? It's, it's, it's totally lovely. Your company is really lovely. We normally, about yeah, this time, sure. we we'll go, around, go around what we're chatting. And then before sure, we, before I've we... actually reached a point in which I, I, I figure you might not speak Italian, but there's a line that says, caution, uh, beer is almost finished. Uh, oh, that's incredible. <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> and and I, re I reached the, the, the yeah. danger line. But... It's too low, you know. It's that, that line should be halfway up the glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Does anyone want, want to go first for what they've been reading this month? Can, or, or, or can I actually just request to go first? Is that okay? Yes, go first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I've i been kind of funny with comics the last couple of months. I found it quite hard to get engaged. Oh. I hope Nina has just I'd done that by accident and we'll get her back on in a couple of minutes. Um, uh, I... Uh, yeah, I've been finding I've been finding engaging comics quite tricky. I don't know I don't know if you guys find this, but when you're writing and, and getting involved in the sort of the as the more creative aspects. Hiya. Oops. <laughs> I wanted I, to, to change tab, but I accidentally closed tab. <laughs> Again. Um, yeah, I um I don't know if it were, I was just saying earlier, like I find it really hard to um sometimes read comics when I'm creating like 
I sometimes I don't know, like just that aspect of of my engagement just kind of goes out the window. I don't really know what it is, but um, I've I've managed to get a wee bit of a break in my own creativity. I've I've sent ish, I've sent the first draft of my uh, of my comic to the artist, so uh, my artist for him to have a look at and see like what he thinks would fit and not fit. So I've I've, I've had a wee bit of time to just chill. Uh, and I picked up this from my local comic book shop last week, and it's I read it in like a day, and I think it might be one of the best comics I've ever read. So, um, high praise. Mm. Uh, oh yeah, well, so I picked up this. I don't know. Um, I'll say Andrew's our comic expert since he owns a shop himself. But um, I read a uh, Feast of Fear by uh, Sean Carmaker. Carmaker. Um, this thing is just insanely good. So it's a, uh, it's an autobot. It's he he's it's it's about so he he's sean um interviewed his mum and spent a lot of time with his mum who'd spent time in her youth in an orphanage like um sean's mum had a uh, had had been unwell and so uh, sean's grandmom had been unwell so his mum spent a lot of time with her younger siblings in an orphanage uh worried worried about the the the, the mental and physical well-being of their mum and uh what Sean did was he kind of documented this through comic. Uh, I don't know if I explained that very well. So basically, he's writing about his mum's experiences as a, as a child. Um, it's. I'm going to show you some of these pages, and because um, it's one of the most beautifully drawn, but like one of the most stylistic things I've read in a long time. Let me see if I can find a good example. So um, it might. Like, I showed Claire, my wife, and she suggested it's a bit like an Escher painting gone mental. Is how she referred to it. So like here is a here's a page of this comic. So we've got I don't know if you can see that clearly, but um here's our protagonists here. So a set of panels of her walking through the street. The the, the um, Sean Canmaker has just drawn Wow deep. and so this is the same character here as here. Yeah, it's a double page spread basically. So double you start on the left. Yeah, exactly. So Sorry, I'm, I'm I'm struggling with my fingers to work out because yeah, mirror yeah, mirrors yeah. and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, so like, yeah, I should do it that way. So this is the same character here as here, and uh, even though it's like this, it's it's a picture of the same street. It's the same character on various parts of the street, and that that that's how he's decided to sort of progress the story rather than sort of traditional panels. Um, I find other examples of it. There was another one that um, within the orphanage. Yeah, here's there was a, there was a uh, there's loads of examples of this because that's how the comics kind of set out. But, um, so that here's a here's a page, double page of his mom. How? Oh, oh there you go. Thank you, man. I've um, up a couple of pages of it. Um, yeah, I've just found his artwork online, and it's yeah, it's phenomenal. Nice. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's so moving as well, though. And even like the um, uh, you can kind of see it in the picture you just put up there, Andrew. So see the um, ah, you can see it there. If you go back to the one that you were just on, sorry, not that one, but the next one, you just switched it there. Um, even the even the boxes. Of, of dialogue so actually this is the bit at the, the this panel here that you just put up is him this is from right towards the end of the graphic novel when when, when the main story's finished and actually what he's doing is he's, he's explaining the creative process behind the comic this is him yeah. kind of explaining you know i spoke to my mom this is how i did it but even like it, it's quite it's it's illustrative of how the whole comic is set up you know instead of like panels and a sort of standard i don't know i don't know if the word standardized structure is accurate but like instead of panels but like a i'll go to this box and i'll go to this box and i'll go to this box your 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 your, your eyes you i don't know how he does it and then um, obviously this is where you you know you need to go to dundee university and do the the sort of creative uh the create the the, the 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 reading up on it but your eyes your eyes go exactly where they need to go um you pick up the parts of the story but you know your your, your eyes drift across a page of stuff and you and you hit the as your eyes travel across, you're picking up the comic, the, the, the story elements that you need to, in the right order. And it's it's incredible. Um, you call it a panelless style, um, mm -hmm. and yeah, the, the, the sort of the way the art, if the art, artist is good, which obviously he is very good, mm -hmm. your eyes are automatically drawn to the correct, you know, from the correct starting point to where the story moves about the screen. But, um, but just, just, just it's really, it, 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 yeah. it really difficult. I imagine like I am. Um, I couldn't have, I just thought it was incredible. And then the, the, the story it's telling is, is obviously really, really personal to him. And you feel it and you feel the notes. And there's the, um, his mother is sort of the middle. So she's like, she has an older brother and two younger brothers. And they're all in this orphanage. 
and um, she, the, the story is mainly about her trying to hold herself together at like eight years old, trying to hold herself together, but also feeling this duty within her family to hold her kids together because obviously there's four four children in the same family that are effectively motherless, and she she decides to sort of almost take in a caretaker role within that, and so like she decides and, 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 until things get better. I've got a I've got a duty in this family to keep everyone together, mm-hmm. and it's never um, it's never she never communicates that emotion to anyone. It's just an in, an impulse feeling inside herself that like if she doesn't keep an eye on her brothers and, and keep conversing with them and holding them together within the orphanage, like they will drift off and all their lives will be worse for it. And then, but um, obviously, I just feel kind of I I, I, can, I can well up even talking about it. There's this whole ongoing issue about. Because um, Sean never really reveals what the, the the mother's issue is, so all we know is that mum's ill and they they've got no one to look after them, so they have to stay in an orphanage for a period of time. But um, I don't, you know, th- there's no indication of whether mum's ever going to get better or whether mum's you know whether mum's got a terminal illness and that's where they're there. That's never communicated in the, in the comic. So you're you've just got this really strong young woman like this young girl who is who's got a duty. <laughs> And she doesn't know how long she's going to hold on to that duty for. She doesn't know, she doesn't know if this is like a temporary arrangement or it's going to be ongoing for the rest of her life. But she she holds on to it, and it's just it's just super powerful. And I see, it's amazing you, actually. Man. Thank you, Andrew, for showing some of that uh, some of the imagery there because I'm trying, trying to get my head around it and to even explain. But yeah, per- do, do you know where the guy's from? Where, where he's from? Denmark. Hello. Denmark. So he's from. Uh, um, his family are originally from Denmark. I don't know if he still is, but right. um, cer- certainly the, the comic is set in Denmark because right. his mom his mom's Danish. It looks amazing. Um, yeah, just really really cool. As I picked it up, my um, my local comic book shop were doing a um, a half price sale on some of their graphic novels, and I just picked up one I thought looked good. And I'm I, can't, I don't even know. I think the front cover drew me. There's just yep. so much even there's so much even going on there. You know, like the. The, the change in colour between what's happening at the bottom of the page to the top of the page. So I was just like, yeah, I'm going to give this a go and I'm glad I did. So this one. That's why we do this uh, show. Lads. Like I just did hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, she put us on a, she put herself on solo uh, solo screen there. <laughs> Wait, Wait, so like um, David, what did you read this week? Yeah, well I I, I jumped into uh, we we always talk about the BGCP uh, the big Glasgow comic page um, guys, they've always got um, comic and toy maps all over the country every weekend, basically, f- for the whole of the year. Um, so there was one in Clyde Bank, which is not far from where I live. And I knew um, these comic and toy maps are really, really good. If anyone's listening in the kind of Scottish area, um, follow their pages. It's the BGCP, the big Glasgow comic page. They're always putting up different comic and toy maps and comic cons and stuff all over the place. The comic and toy maps are free. Uh, the comic cons cost three pounds, maybe five pounds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Colin, like we're going to the one in Dundee. That's yeah. why I have to be kind to Dundee, but we're going to the one in Dundee <laughs> on Saturday, and that's the yeah, that's three pound entry. Yeah, so it's always really, really it's, you know, inexpensive stuff. Yeah, the comic and toy maps, don't get me wrong, they're mostly just toys, but there are some um, comic p- people there. Um, AAA Comics, Alan Todd, he's kind of always there 99% of the time. Um, AAA Comics, and he's got a huge uh, selection of mostly mainstream comics. Uh, Peter Watson was there as well. Um, he was selling some stuff. But uh, the reason I went was I knew that um, George Lennox was there from Cult Empire Comics, and I've always wanted to pick up something from him. Um, so I jumped in to see to say hello to him and introduce myself to him. Okay. I picked up um, Vietnam Zombie Holocaust. Um, he had, the, I think there's four issues of this. It was the day before payday and a couple of days before payday, so it was pretty poor. So I only picked up the first issue, um, but I definitely will get the rest of it. Uh, I've got two to, to shout out, by the way, so don't think of it. So anyway, um, Vietnam Zombie Holocaust, it's basically exactly what it says on the tin. It's uh, set in Vietnam. Uh, it's the usual, um, the usual stuff. The scientists back home in the U.S. of A. is uh, working on a, on a, a potion, if you like, where the soldiers you'll inject the virus into the soldiers. They'll do whatever they want for them. Um, he does it. He gets human gets um, okayed for human trials. 
uh, it, it works is the soldiers basically just become like a zombie and they can just they'll do it as they're told and so on and so forth and go out and kill and you know not very difficult to be killed he wants to do more tests but of course the big general's just like nah get it straight into the uh, the, the the war zone so they just go straight into the war zone without testing it all out and of course the guys end up eating uh, the people that they're killing and of course that turns them into zombies and there's another platoon already in Vietnam and of course at the very end of the first issue the the the, the Viet no sorry the, the civilians in Vietnam step out and they're all dressed as zombies and that's how it or not dressed they are zombies and that's how it pretty much ends um, this is by George Lennox, he's the writer, Cult Empire Comics is his own thing. The artwork is by, I think it's James Devlin. Uh, James Devlin, Colin Bell is a letterer. Colin Bell's always all over the place. I find this artwork to be amazing. You know, I think this is uh, up there with some really professional stuff. This is really, really good. Right. We've had George on the, we had George on the podcast in the first yeah. lockdown. Um, I was speaking and- to him and I asked him if he'd been on, he says, yeah. Um, it's a bit violent. There's lots of blood and gore, which is kind of what I like. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, the artwork is superb. It's really professional stuff. Uh, the colouring and everything is really, really good as well. Um, I'm looking forward. I'm definitely going to pick up the rest of the rest of this stuff. I can get on Cult Empire Comics, which is uh, he's got a website and things. I'm pretty sure you can order online. So I'm going to check that out later on in the month. I've actually spent a fortune in comics this month. <laughs> <laughs> No, honestly, it's it's bad. But anyway, I gave this a punt. I gave this a wee shout out last week, which is um, weird work by Jordan Thomas and Shaky Kane. Oh yeah, um, Shaky Kane. I've, uh, I've reviewed one of his comics last year on here. Kane and yeah, Abel. yeah, I remember. Yeah. Um, Jordan Thomas is also the guy that done the comic um, uh, Quarantine. And he had lots of different artists. So there was one story, and like, the artist is like two pages each. Yeah. Uh, I think it was like 17 or 14 artists or whatever, I can't remember. And uh, he'd done that during the first lockdown. Um, so that's why I, I gave it a shot because I started following on Facebook and things. And this is just, hold on, one, one, one book. It's, it's um, set in a place called, hold on, Stellar City. Stellar City is exactly what you'd expect it to be. It's uh, full of the gunnels of people. Um, nose to tail with traffic just bustling with lots and lots of people it starts off um there's a, a the big gang land big gang lord person um i forgot her name now she gets uh, framed or caught murdering someone so, so she gets put, put away um then it's basically like a tough war different gangs jostling for position it takes up like eight months later it's kind of narrated as a almost like he's the journalist um, telling the stories if you're reading the paper. He refers to the reader quite a lot. Uh, and then there's like a big kill uh, where it's a detective, uh, a tech billionaire's right-hand woman and someone else who have forgotten. And the detective's partner is taken onto the case uh, because they've been murdered to find out what's going on. And he's got the shakes. It's just referred to as the shakes. But it's full of interesting characters mm-hmm. like this guy. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> you know, he is a politician, which is great because <laughs> he's a fucking pig. Um, the main character, I mean, look at, look at this here. Listen, this is a, a bar. You know, look at these guys. Look at these characters. So you've got this dark storyline going on and all this colourful, colourful characters going on. Uh, every, every single page is just full of other complete and utter madness you know and the main character or the main detective it's Swasi I think his name is I'm not 100% sure how you pronounce it S-W-A-C-E um, that's him oh, up here he's the blue guy and his new partner is the red lady I mean look at this guy you know and there's a wee baby in here he gets murdered by a Baby, <laughs> you always feel, you always feel total weird shit, man. Aye, it's, just, aye, it's just full of weird. Nonsense. It's not a bad thing. That's that's a compliment. I know, I know. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but it's really, really good. I'm really enjoying it. So it's up to issue two. In fact, off Kickstarter. Um, Jordan Thomas also done um, Frank and the Farm, which finished last year, and he's done a big collection Kickstarter. Anyway, uh, 
really, really good. Really looking forward to it. I think it'll probably wrap up in about five issues, I'd imagine. Um, yeah, ideal. That's me. Amazing. You know, have you got any? Have you got any shout outs? Any interesting things you've read? That you well, read? most of the stuff that I read is uh, through webtoons, so I can like show you <laughs> through my phone. Yeah. Um, okay, so if you want to. But uh, one that I've been reading recently that I've really uh, been enjoying is called "Leveling Up My Husband to the Max." So it's about it. It's you about hear this. Andrew's the tape up, so Andrew's can. <laughs> so it's about this woman, and uh, she's a noble woman in like a like a parallel world. And after living for ten years with a husband that didn't really love her, like didn't treat her well, she is unjustly accused of treason, and they are killed. Uh, but like when she dies, she is actually like sent back to the past by 10 years. And so she decides to use everything that she had learned of the following 10 years in relation to like politics, uh, economy, uh, technological inventions to her advantage mm -hmm. so that she doesn't end up the same way that she did in her original in her original world. Uh, well, sorry, in her original life where she was accused of treachery uh, and pretty much sentenced to, to death on the spot. Mm. So it's it's really, really sure. It's a hard work. It's a hard work. I mean, I love these. That type of artwork up to... This was pretty cool. I, I don't I don't read much stuff on the web, but like it's a different presentation style, isn't it? it then it, you know it's yes. obviously still in the it's still in the comics forum, but like obviously these these panels are if these panels are on the page, I can't imagine them like well it's because and... they're they're formatted in a completely different way because these are not to be read on on paper like a traditional comic, but they're to be read on a phone, you know, like scrolling. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. So it's like a completely new and different type of formatting for for comics, which is also one of the reasons why I think why Webtoon has been getting so popular, because more and more people, especially the, the younger ones who can't really afford going to comic stores and such, like they can just download the app on their phone and and read most of them for free. Yes. Yeah, you, you can get, get on a you know, get, get on a phone or even a reasonable sized tablet, you know, a seven inch tablet. Mm -hmm. Fire tablet these days for forty nine pound or something like that, and you've got access to through webtoons and and a couple of other places. You've got access to thousands and um, thousands of titles, which quite often have got hundreds of of, of, of pages on them. So, uh, you know, yeah. that's amazing. Some, some 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 you know some manga um, manga comic readers that charge you a, a, a fee, you know, like a seven ninety nine a month or something like that. Crunchyroll is it called? I think something like that. Um, yeah. Or one of these, but uh, you know. I think yeah. it's mostly free, isn't it? You can just mm -hmm. go in there and, and read whatever you want. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's great. It's, it's the movement away from paper comics. We've talked about this on, on here in the past. The movement away from dedicated paper comics to people making a living from uh, you know from from just digital is is it's, it's stepping up a piece. Mm. Is it going to go the same way as kind of Spotify is going though, or Spotify, you know, it's new. Hey, as, 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 long, as, as, as long as Neil Young doesn't leave it, I'm not bothered, right? I'm going to start reading webtoons and then it's like, where's all the Neil Young gone? I'm going to be raging. So like, uh, well, yeah, so um, I think we're going to start wrapping things up. We're usually about an hour. 15 to an hour and a half. I wanted to like I wanted to make a quick we were chatting about this very briefly in our group chat. And uh, I kind of wanted to like I don't know have a wee element in our uh, a wee a wee section of our podcast I call it something like raise a glass where we have to I, I think it's important that we sort of recognize some of our brothers and like heroes that have uh, and, and sisters and heroes that have, have passed away in the last couple of weeks. Um Often, like we, we we do, often talk about folk that we know and, and folk that have uh, that have really inspired us, um, but um, we don't really make a, a thing of it. And I have certainly noticed in the last couple of weeks, and, and certainly today, that we've lost we've lost quite a lot of comic creators. Um, 
and uh, yeah, f- feel free if I forget anybody or or, or don't raise um, make enough of a deal of it um, to, to, to chastise me in the comments. But um, uh, I did wanted to um, I did want to mention very briefly that uh, we lost um, today. I believe we lost um, Brian August uh, Augustine, who was a comic writer and editor who wrote gay uh, Batman's Gotham by Gaslight. Which is a, a phenomenal piece of work, yeah. and obviously, um, he did, so he died on the first, so a couple of years, a days ago. Um, but he was also known for, um, and I discovered his work in the nineties when he was working on the Flash. So, um, just a really important figure in, in comics. That um, I mean, got the phenomenal artwork. Like, what's that? Sorry, that's phenomenal artwork. I think that's that's him. No, this this is one that I've put up there. This is uh, Jean Claude Messier. Oh, yeah. I was gonna, um, I was gonna say about John Claude as well. Last week, who was, who was the yeah. creator of Valerian, um, yeah. and along with Mobius, he was one of the one of the sort of big, big well, names in well, French comics. Going back, we just to like that. That. yeah, um, I think that picture alone that you just put up. So yeah, I, I want uh, yeah, uh, R.I.P. to Brian and, and apologies to his family and stuff like that. Um, I understand a really good guy who was who was a massive contributor to the comics as he got them back. Astley um, had a new lease of life in the last couple of years with the with the DC movie. And um, the DC animated movie, and I, I think um, I think it's an underrated gem that's sort of found itself back in the in the in the public um, in the public eye line, which was really really good because it's an amazing series. Um, and of, like this picture here, when we're talking about uh, John Claude, uh, yeah, the, you could. You know, do you know when this picture was drawn? The, the, well, the the the, the storyline. I think this would have been drawn sometime between nineteen sixty. 65 and, and sort of 1970 that was when he was at his best mm-hmm. when he, his, his work on valerian which i know most people don't know not through through the sort of movie it was about five years ago or something like that yeah uh, but this was this was this was a, a comic it's like a 50 year old comic it goes back to sort of 1950s 1960s sort of style and hugely influential on things like this sort of steampunk thing like um obviously on star wars if you go in and look at the, the things in star wars there's, there's massive influences that have with star wars but also blade runner um, things like that. Uh, Macy did the he did a lot of the design work for a movie called The Fifth Element. I don't know if you've seen that. That's going back. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, well, it's, it's, um, it's the same guy that did uh, Valerian, isn't it? It's Luke Luke Besson. Did he not bring them? Oh, Luke Besson made them both. I so yeah. um, it was obviously a French filmmaker with a French artist and stuff like this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Like I say, he was a hugely influential. We see that that picture yeah. that you just that picture you put up there just uh, for me. Um, you know, John. George, uh, George Lucas owes so much just to that one image. You oh, know? Yeah. Uh, like, if you, if you do a bit of digging and look at Star Wars Valerian and you'll see images side by side and you, you, you can't believe, um, I'll see if I can find some actually. Because considering George Lucas is known for like suing everybody. <laughs> I <might> sue everybody. <laughs> he, he, um, he, he sent a cease and desist. Yeah, or Luke, I say he did. Lucas Luke, Lucas Art sent a cease and desist to a local cinema in Dunfermline, who had had the rights to show the Star Wars trilogy, but hadn't paid. I, I want to say they hadn't paid for the rights to advertise the fact that they were going to show the Star Wars trilogy. It was it was a total technicality, and they got cease and desist. And you're like, arsehole. Anywho, <laughs> um, uh, and also, uh, Ben's just popped on there. So, yeah, thank you, Ben, um, for doing that. Um, yeah, how, how we feel, or how we feel, was another one that, uh, yeah, he was one of the guys that the guys in the 77, I believe, worked with. Um, I've seen that earlier on as well, actually. Very, very recently. Eh? I, think it's, it's, I think it's important that we recognize that some of our heroes, some of our friends and, and family, have a, and are, a, yeah, don't want to make a big deal about it, but it's just, I think it's important that we acknowledge these things when they happen. Um, <laughs> That's it. Neil saying uh, he hopes that we're all coming to the Comic Con in Scotland and North East. Uh, I'll talk to you about that later, Neil. <laughs> I'm not going, um, but the guest list looks amazing. And um, there was they announced somebody for uh, they announced somebody for Comic Con North East last week, and that it was it was enough for me to be like, <gasps> uh, and then for is that the Scotland like, Comic Con. Yeah, it was in Aberdeen. So um, aye, is that is that is that aye? Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna Google it because there was somebody that I wanted that there was somebody that they're advertising that I was like oh my goodness. Um, have you got something else that you wanted to put up there, Andrew? No. Oh, I yeah. thought I could. I guess no worries. 
Okay. Um, yeah. So before uh, before we give uh, Nina the floor to just do a final bit of plug-in, has anyone got anything else they want to talk about this week? No, I'm just uh, plugging the BGCP comic and toy maps, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm yeah. good with that. Well, um, at time of recording, or on uh, um, Saturday the sixth, did I get my date right? Uh, I can't remember what the day is. Saturday the fifth of um, it's got the BGCP are doing. Uh, they're doing Glass. They're doing Dundee this weekend. Um, at, was it Bonner Hall? So yeah, I think so. yeah. And uh, if anybody liked, particularly liked the, like the look of um, the Vietnam zombie holocaust, uh, George will be there. Yeah, yeah, George will be there. So you'll be able to buy it straight from him and get it signed and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. let him know yeah. the Brugger are sent him over. That'd be good. Absolutely. Yeah. We should possibly mention we're going. We're all going to be in Acme as well. I know we mention this every week, but we're going to be in Acme in the third, in the fourth, no, the fifth and the sixth, is it of, of March? We're all going to yeah. be there. Fourth That'd and fifth. Good. Fourth and fifth. Fourth, fifth, and yeah, sixth. Yeah, yeah. Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, like Saturday, fifth and sixth of March. Right. We'll have a wee chat it. with it. We've not had the chat yet, but um, yeah, we certainly are going to be talking with um, Chaz about what the. Uh, what the night the time looks like as well. So if you're in the Glasgow area but can't make the Comic Con because you're working or that sort of stuff, we should be able to try okay. and it'd be so nice to can see you. Um awesome. Right Nina. Um, plug yourself one last time. All right. So one last thing I guess. Sunrise Blossom Volume One and Two on Kickstarter. It is currently three hundred and twenty two percent funded. There nice. are ten days left. And you can find me on uh, my, my link tree, which is linktr.ee slash Nina D. Aberline. And there you can find my Patreon, Webtoon, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, newsletter, Tapas, Etsy, Discord, Fur Affinity, Facebook, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Nice one. Right. Right. All the links, I'm assuming all the links are on the um, are on the, the, the Facebook page as well, guys. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On all my social media, I've got the the link tree, which is linktr.ee slash Nina D Aberline. Cool, we'll cool, make sure cool. it's in the comments and the the show notes for this week as well. But also, obviously, you've seen that Andrew has been sharing uh, in a much more professional and and uh, concise way than I do. Has been sharing the um, has been sharing all the links which are on the comments to this episode on Facebook. So every every post is something you're like, oh, I want to check that out specifically, and you um, and you can't remember, just go and find us on Facebook. Join us next week. We should have a guest. Um, I'm just finalising some stuff. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody next week, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Colin on Saturday, and I'm looking forward to uh, I don't know maybe seeing Andrew in the pub on Sunday. <laughs> uh, and uh, Hi, all good. David, I'll see you in Glasgow, if not before. <laughs> and Nina, thanks again. You're always Thank welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, lovely thought to you. Right, guys, cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.